Guys, yeah. Star Talk Sports Edition. I got another explainer for you. Ooh. Okay. Gary and Chuck, my co-host from Sports Edition, thought we'd spend a little time talking about the banked turns in NASCAR. Ooh. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and this you is had a subject- me at bank. You had me at bank. I was <laughs> like, <the> finally, <laughs> I'm going to talk about some money on this show. I'm cool. <laughs> so the banked turns has a lot of referencing. I mean, uh, there's some similarity to a lip out in golf. Uh, it, the the yeah. physics, there's some similar physics going on, I should say. And there's some interesting physics, we'll have to save for a whole other segment, not for this one, that relates to the movement of light through the space-time continuum of the universe. What? <laughs> that's another, that's, I just want to tease what might be another wow. explainer on the banked tracks of NASCAR and how it relates to the space-time continuum. Any racetrack that's any kind of oval that in that uh, is designed for high speeds, they're going to bank the turn. Hmm. And I don't know if you've ever been to a, a NASCAR race. I, I went, to, I was in Daytona once and I made sure to catch one. And they invited me down to the, into the middle and I, it was fun. And, and have you ever tried walking up the bank of that track? No. You no. can't. You, 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 it's like, what? This is a hill with a slope I have never walked up in my life. Okay. And so then you realize, oh my gosh. What angle is it? What, what okay, I don't remember the angle, mm. but it's higher than your brain is telling you it should be, right? Mm. And so you're saying, what's going on here? So it turns out, we should ask the question, if there were no bank <laughs> and you're a car going into the turn, you are relying entirely on the friction between your tires and the road. Tokyo Drift, baby! Okay. <laughs> Entirely. So, are you going to slide out before yes. you make this turn? Totally. Yes. Or not? This is what you, this is, okay. And you have to steer to make sure you stay on the track. Always turn towards the skid, people. Remember that. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. now, but if I put a bank on that turn... Mm -hmm. then the track is applying a force at you, inward, towards you, to the center of the arc of the circle, of the mm -hmm. arc of the turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? So there's a force pointing inward. And the steeper the track, the greater that force is as you drive along that track. Okay? Luke, so, I am on your, your speed. turn signal. <laughs> So you can calculate the exact angle of the track based on how fast your car is going and what, what we say is the radius of curvature, how tight is the turn. You mm. could match those three quantities so that as you drive into the turn, you don't have to steer at all. Mm. The track does your steering for you. But Neil, what speed am I doing for the track to be my magic... Well, it depends well, on well, no, the, it, you need to it, it, incline of the bank. You got to know that. It depends on what the track is and right. what the expected speeds are of the cars. Right. The last time I ran this calculation, it was about 180 miles an hour, something like that, oh, okay. for what I'm describing to take effect. Okay. okay? So, so you're, not, you're, not, you're not, you're not going to do it in your Toyota Tercel, basically. Yeah, because what happens in your, in, in your Toyota, you don't have enough speed to sustain that. And so the car is going to might fall into the so middle you're of the track. going to slide down the slide bank down. as you're trying to go around it. As you're trying to go around How it. How many Correct. racing drivers, Neil, do you think are going to say, you know what, I've got it to the speed I need it to be at. I'm going to take my hands off the wheel and let the bank do the rest? Well, so none of them. But yes. I can tell you this, <laughs> that if you go higher than that speed, right? Yeah you run the risk of skidding off into the embankments. And you yes. see every race that happens. And Go that is why we watch NASCAR. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what I'm saying is the cars that mildly lose control, but not enough to be taken out of the race, right. and they, if they slide off, it's on the bank, and they, they slide up and hit the upper thing because so they're true. trying to take the turn too fast. Yes, and, it's, and that is true. That's when you see the car and the car like high sides. The they're Correct. the car Correct. is straight. It's totally straight as it's going around, but then you see it high side. The back comes around. Correct. Correct. And, and so, so, because okay. the 
That's right, because it is overcoming the na the native force of the tilted track to turn the car. So, ah. so yeah, that's right. So you lose the, the 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 frictional connection between your car and just like the Toyota to sell that would just sort of slide down inward on the track. Right. So so Neil, before you get onto that point, remember yeah. when we sat down with Mario Andretti? Formula One yes. world champion. One of my Indy. favorite interviews. I what did he, he came to my I had Mario Andretti in my Hayden Plantarium I office. I forgot about that. Oh, yes, right? I did. What did, he, oh. what did he say about racing? I asked him because yes. I had heard this quote and I wanted confirmed by him. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, I am responsible for that quote. The quote is, if you are in complete control of your car, you're not in the race. Wow! <laughs> so when the cool. guy, when the when the race when the NASCAR driver comes in at slightly higher speed, he is holding to the Mario Andretti principle. Yes, of racing. yes, correct, correct. And by the way, it's not a guarantee that you'll always fly mm. off. You're just yeah, at right. higher risk of that. Okay, yeah, depends on you know what your airfoil is doing, your, your spoiler is doing, and what the design of your underbelly of the car is, what the air currents are, because these all change forces operating on your car. So the point is, if you entered the turn at the speed the turn was banked for, yeah, okay, then you do not have to steer the car and the direction of the car will completely change with the track. Look at that. What this means is, even if you are a little lower or a little higher than that speed, basically any steering you're doing on the track is to maneuver among the cars, not to actually change the direction you're driving in. This is important because there's an old joke about, about Charlotte, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, where all drivers only know how to turn left, okay? Right, right. <laughs> because that's the headquarters for NASCAR. And so it's, it's, so it's a joke about this, but in fact, the track is doing your steering and not you. So it should be Charlotte, North Carolina, where no one knows how to turn at all. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah, because you're again, you're only turning to maneuver your to place maneuver among your car. the other oh, cars. Right, right. Which, by the way, is a better t test of the driver as you're maneuvering, I think, right? You mm -hmm. shouldn't have to worry about let me change the uh, turn because the track is turning. Now, of course, in the, in the open wheel sports, the Formula mm -hmm. One, yeah. uh, those tend to be on flat tracks. And Neil, they're not always flat. There's hills, there's banks, there's chicanes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, everything. sorry. But the yeah, yeah. But they're, they're in roads. It's they're road racing, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, for it's, so a, much a, of that. It's a Apart track. Mo it's Monaco, Monte Carlo's a road race, but the rest of it is uh, specific. They're tracks, they, track. and they have actual yeah. turns. Mm -hmm. They're actual turns, correct? Yeah. Where you're yeah, not going 200 right. miles an hour on the turn. You have to slow, really, yeah, slow, really down slow down. To so, make, what, to make what sort of turn. friction am I going to need, Neil, on my tires? to overcome me having liftoff up the back. Okay, so I want to save that for another Ooh, one of these. Ooh, teaser. Because a whole friction, oh my gosh, there is no life without friction. Mm, tell and me about no it. <laughs> stop, stop, oh, stop. I wondered where that joke was going to go. <laughs> oh, I could take it anywhere you want. No, no, I know, no life no. without yeah. friction. Uh, we can start with being a black man, and then we can okay. end up at marriage. Okay? okay uh, no. Fatherhood, uh, wherever you want to be. Friction. All right. Damn, Chuck, is, Chuck, Chuck has got issues. Yes, I know. <laughs> Did it's you miss your us. session earlier well, today? I know most of it. No, the truth is, I I haven't had therapy this week, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah we we'll get to that fast. Yeah. Um, so uh, the point is the the tire slicks. This mm -hmm. is just to give a, a, a preview to what would be our friction segment mm -hmm. in, a, in a future show. Uh -huh. um, the co it's called a coefficient of friction right. um, between a rubber tire and concrete. Okay, most road surfaces, be it asphalt mm -hmm. or cement is very close to one. That's like the highest coefficient of friction you can possibly get without having some other kind of interaction between your wheel and the road surface, mm. okay? Like spikes, or if the tire is gummy and is actually sticking to the surface, right. you can have a coefficient of friction greater than one. Right. And in the tire slicks of drag racers, of drag, I know especially there, it's surely also true for NASCAR. You ever see when they warm up the wheels and they, they spin and they'll, they'll smoke? And if you heat that rubber, it gets tackier. Right. Okay? So when you have tacky rubber, you can go coefficient of friction greater than one, which means 
the bank of the track can be overcome by your connectivity to the track itself. Mm. So you can take the speeds at higher than what the advertised banking speed would give you and not fly off the track and hit the embankment. Nice. But more about friction. That's a whole... Uh, All that's right, totally we'll save deserving. that. Save that, because that's... Uh, uh, we learned a little bit of that with Laurie Winkless, if you remember, with geckos and Van der Waal Laurie, forces and yes. things like that. So that's that's going to be fascinating. Man, my boy remembers these shows. Wow. Okay. Too, man. <laughs> a couple other things before we break. The undersides of the cars. I see what okay. you did there, by the way, before we break. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I caught it. Uh, if you have fast moving air, mm -hmm. there is lower pressure than slow moving air. Okay. And that's the famous experiment you can do with a, a ribbon of paper. Have you ever done this experiment? Mm. Uh, if you t uh, you can do it at home. Just cut a ribbon of paper from a sheet of loose leaf paper, uh, eight and a half by eleven, but make it like two inches across. Okay, and it's got to be long and droopy, so it can't be like a postcard or something. And let it droop in front of you and blow above it. And as you blow above it, the moving air has lower pressure than the stationary air below it, and the paper flutters up and ends up horizontal in front of your face. So I got a piece sheet of paper. It's, it's just a simple, mm -hmm. a, just a, a simple strip, ribbon. A strip of paper. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. And notice it's just dangling down in front of me. And if I sit here and blow up above it, all the air is going above it. And so notice for those who could watch it this. Lifts that up it lifts up instead. It completely lifts up. It lifts up even though you're blowing across the top of it. Correct. Right. And so the airflow around the shapes of these cars affects that. Yes. And that also affects the effective weight of the car on the track, which gives you more friction, which is what you want. And so you're, whole so other... you're, playing, you're playing with the mass as opposed to the weight. And you're no, creating, no. creating suction. Ooh, 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 ooh. No. Now we got a ooh. whole nother explainer. No, the mass versus weight are two different things. All right. Oh, but you, you must be are you creating the... a suction. You, you, yes, you, you can yeah. you can create more weight on a car's tires without increasing its mass. mass. That's what okay. I was trying to say by Okay. Yeah. Exactly. It's basically putting your thumb on the scale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> Metaphorically yeah, you know speaking. What I'm saying. Yeah. You okay. Know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a that's You're, a B plus analogy. Yeah, we, uh, we can yeah. improve on that, Jack. Yeah, you I, know. I, I <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, look, so it, you know, if you're pressed down on a scale, you're 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 heavier. But the truth right. is, you're not. No. Now, have you ever noticed? Like, just a little teaser. You ever notice the spoilers that are on cars? They're flat on the top and curved on curved the bottom. Curved on the bottom. You ever mm. notice that? Yes. Okay, that's the opposite of what an airplane wing does. The airplane wing is curved on the top and flat on the bottom, because right. an airplane wants you to go up mm. as it moves through the air, whereas the spoiler on the back wants the back of the car to press downward with more force and increasing the effective weight of the car without increasing its mass. Very important for car racing. And that's a whole, that's a whole other thing. So guys, that's all we have time for, but there's Ooh. so much physics in NASCAR. That's just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do a few more of these. Yeah. Um, on friction, on the airfoil, mm -hmm. on fuel, on on the on accidents, we should do a whole one on just accidents. There you go. Yeah. Let's do that okay. first, please. Okay, Chuck is into the accidents. You know and how is it that people can get up and walk away from these spectacular accidents? There's a physics reason for that. I just thought I'd tell you. Hmm. That's all. That's what that's what makes the accident enjoyable. When you see Chuck, the guy, just, when you see the guy <laughs> pop out of the cage and he's like, "Hey, everybody, I'm fine." I'm like, "All right." All right. More, all right, more of those. <laughs> yeah. All right. This has been another Star Talk Sports Edition explainer. Gary Chuck, always good to have you there. Right, Pleasure, Neil. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, signing off, bidding you to keep looking up. <laughs> <laughs>